Imperfect Gentleman Show. Yes, yes, yes! Actually, it's a big no, because for some reason, George isn't here. He's supposed to be here. Stephanie was supposed to call in, doesn't know how to figure out how to use the phone, because she's all the way in England, in London. We don't have the same phones in London. So I don't know what's going on, but you know it's the one and only impeccable, impenetrable Teron Von Gossery, alongside nobody, because nobody else is here but me. The and, and at this point, I've become the true and perfect gentleman. Now, will I be here every single week? No, no, I won't. Uh, actually, I am going to Israel in, and Palestine in two weeks, which is a 50-50 chance I'll be back. That's the truth. Like, I'm, I'm, I've been a lot of places in the world, but going to Israel and Palestine is going to be one of the most interesting uh, experiences of my life. I'm actually going with the State Department for comedy shows, which I don't even know how my comedy is going to play over there. Like, and the biggest fear I have is that I'm going to bomb. No, I'm, okay. So here's the thing, right? So it made me start thinking about how the world is outside of the United States. We don't realize how good life is in the United States until you leave the United States. Now, there are places that are beautiful. There are a lot of beautiful places. This is a beautiful planet. This planet is so amazing in so many ways. It's ridiculous. But- the one thing that sticks with me is that when I say there's no place like home, I wonder if other people feel the exact same way when they're from somewhere else. Because to me, there's no place like the United States. The conveniences, the one thing like people, we take this for granted every single time, customer service. Just going to a place with a product that you've used and then returning it, you think they're doing that in other countries? You think you could go You could go to Iran and you're in Iran like, excuse me, excuse me, sir, I just bought this and it doesn't work. They're like, oh, okay, you, you just bought it? Oh, let me see, let me see that, oh my, now you don't have nothing, go. Like, there's no way there's customer service in the rest of the world, you know what I'm saying? There is no, there is no concept of, like simple things we take for granted all the time, like just turning on the water and their water coming out of the faucet. Like we take that for granted because there's so many countries on this planet where that doesn't happen. Where specifically right now, the Olympics in Rio de Janeiro, they're having a problem with that. Like there's faucets that just don't have water. We're spoiled here. We're so spoiled that last night we were ordering food and people were ordering the meat based on how the meat was treated before it was killed. They were like, we want grass fed cow meat. So now not only are you eating, but you are so spoiled with food that you are worried about how your, how your animal was eating before you're eating it. Like that's crazy. That's crazy. There are countries that in the world are like, I wish we had grass. Like we are just so like you drive down and there, the grove, in the grove, we have that uh, water fountain. It just spews water in the, in the sky. And this is how, how spoiled we are. It's, there are countries that don't have water. They do not have water. And now we're just splashing around just to entertain us to music. And then we're so rich, we're throwing money in it. You know what I'm saying? We're like, you know what? Fuck you, third world. Boom, I'm throwing money in, that, in the water that we just have. Like, that's a real thing that we do all the time. And we take these things for granted. And the, and the thing that started making me think is, why are the countries that have the most resources the, the ones that have the least resources? Like Africa, which we tend to think of as one country, but it is not, right? Because people will be like, where are you from? Africa. Africa is a huge continent, right? So the countries in Africa have so much resources. The countries in South America, so much resources. It, even in the Middle East, there's resources. I mean, it's not so much when it comes to uh, when it comes to farming, for example. But in in terms of minerals and mineral deposits and oil and things like that, obviously, why is it that the Western countries are they just better bureaucratically? Are they just better organized? Are they just better managed? Like, I really want to understand how that principle comes to play. How is it possible that Europe? And the United States, the United States has a lot of resources, Canada, United States going into Mexico, but Europe doesn't really have that many resources. You know, like the whole concept of the potato famine was for one year, potatoes grow anywhere. And then they couldn't even grow potatoes for like a couple years. Like there is no, like what does England have? Coal, coal, that is their black product. How do they run the world? And then it hit me that necessity is the mother of invention. And in that case, motivation. 
they were motivated when other civilizations must not have been as motivated because they had everything plentiful. And in, in, in the Middle East, we have this thing in, in Persian, we call it tarof. It's like when you are polite to someone, you're overly polite. You're like, no, stay. What do you mean? You're leaving? Stay. No, no, you've only been here for four days. Stay for 10. Like, yo, at some point, can I leave? Like, it's real, right? I think that white people went to countries and they were like, no, no, you can have it. They're, we can have it. Bob, get over here. These, these guys are idiots. They just, they were too nice. And they just took over. Because how did like, India has a billion people. Please tell me how five Englishmen went and just took over all of India. Like, how is that even possible? You know what I'm saying? They went over and they were like, hello. Oh, oh yeah, I would love a spot of tea. Oh, this is delicious. Delicious. By the way, I think we're in charge here now. And the Indians were like, okay, thank you, come again. Like, there was no, there was a disconnect, obviously. Some type of disconnect. And it plays, it plays in the national political forum. Is the concept that cultures just react to things differently. You, you go in, in an American house with your shoes on. If you took your shoes off, they might be like, that's so weird. You go into, like, a Asian or Middle Eastern house with your shoes on. You might as well kill yourself. Like there's times where I thought my dad would chop my legs off because I had shoes on inside the house. That's why you can't bring your American friends over to your Middle Eastern house without filling them in on the rules. American people just walk in their house and don't even say hi to their parents. They just don't say hi. Like I would get a lecture for three weeks over another kid not saying hi to my dad that knew me. You know what I'm saying? I didn't even know the kid's name. He's like, why are your friends so, they're, they're cow? They don't say hello? They're, 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 why? What is wrong with them? What is wrong with you? Like, yo, I didn't even do anything. Or even a disconnect between white American and black American. There's a huge disconnect in the way people culturally express themselves. People tend to think black people are angry when they're just assertive. They're not being angry at all. They're not angry until you start telling them how angry they are. They are not angry at all until you keep telling them, oh my, like you're reacting to them as if they're angry when they're just trying to clarify or get a point or just joyous. Like the, the Baptist culture is a joyous culture. That Southern Baptist culture of like, woo, and they're in church and they're like, yeah, we love Jesus. Like it's, it's like fun, right? So you take that and make it into a black song. It's like, we love Jesus. And it's more, more pitchy and stuff. And that's how they are in general. That's how that group of people react to things right? We don't often understand because we try our best not to. In the United States, we try not to understand what goes on in the rest of the world. Right now, if I ask people in the United States what the capital of Canada is, I guarantee you 80% of people do not know. The capital of our neighbor to the north, they will not know what it is. They will not at all. They have no idea. Do you know, Martin, do you know what the capital of Canada is? Toronto. Toronto? Wrong. This is our not John of the week. John isn't here. Please introduce yourself. It's Amir, and I believe the capital is Ottawa. Excellent, Amir. Excellent. That's true. Thank you. Where were you raised? In uh, California, the Valley, but my parents are actually from Tehran. Exactly. And that's the real thing. So you were raised here. Yes. In America, born your whole life. The Valley. In the Valley. Is there a difference between... The way Middle Eastern kids are raised and the way American kids are raised. Huge. <laughs> huge. Huge. There's a huge difference. Now, here's the thing that people need to understand. And this is what I want to get across to everyone. Is that Amir, whose parents are from Tehran. Mm -hmm. um, are they Persian, your parents? Both of them full. Full Persian, right? And they have Persian values and were born and raised there? Yes, they escaped the revolution. Exactly. They came here. Are you Iranian or are you American? Second generation American. Actually, first full, generation. Full, full your parents. Iranian. Yeah. Exactly. But you're American. Like, you could not go back to Iran and live there. It would be... T I've been there. You've been there. Uh, they're incredibly nice. You you meet someone <laughs> to get a loaf of bread in the morning. They, they invite you over to have tea and bread with them at their house. Exactly. And here, you see someone in the street. They look at their cell phone and, and ignore you. It's very different. Yeah. But I don't know if I can live there. It's, it's hard. I don't know. 
you couldn't live there, I don't think, because you're just used to living here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like we're yeah. used to, even our stomachs are used to the bacteria here. You go there, you're getting diarrhea for three weeks. You know what I'm saying? 